Hello, welcome back to the Banner Saga. Pausing to catch your breath, you glance backward to see the caravan stretched out past the point of safety. They are spaced out so far, you are unable to see those bringing up the rear. We've got to pull them together, says Ivor. It'd be dangerous to stop until at least the gods tone. The path should be just ahead. Uh, slow the pace so that everyone can catch up. Well, let's try. You make your way to the rear and hoist a small child onto your shoulders. Fight for every step. Remember those who didn't make it and push onwards. The clansmen see your effort and follow suit, pushing themselves harder. Yeah, and morals improved. That's nice. That's really lots of men and we only have seven days of supplies. Far enough for the day, I think. After a day of misery, men and women dropped their meager possessions beneath the godstone of Hridvaldir. What are we doing? We just left our homes because suddenly there was they were dredged. Chief Chieftain did what I suggested and look what he got for it. Look at these people. Somebody has to tell hold them together. That's you, Rook. How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Lie? Tell them everything's going to be alright? Gods, Rook, I don't know. Pretend you know what you're doing. That's what the rest of us do. Thanks for the advice. Then do whatever you want. Let them fend for themselves if you can live with it. You humans are absurd work. Furious when you're not in control. Terrified when you are. Pull it together. <sighs> you're right. Think of how I feel. I'm stuck nursing a bunch of weaklings. You do care. I can tell. Men are a plague on the world, worse than any dredge, as far as I can tell. Just like this and why we get along so well, Ivor. You sleep poorly, the sun forever stuck to an eternally bright sky. Before the others rise, you find yourself staring over long, low hills covered in pine. The godstone looms overhead, the massive eyes of Hridvaldir looking in the same direction as you. See, let's inspect it. The weathered stone doesn't see many visitors, not much reasons to travel so far east. When hunters come through, they sometimes stop to give offerings, out of habit more than anything else now that the gods are dead. Hridvaldir was the god of hunters and of wild beasts, occasionally seen roaming the land as both man and wolf. He was always depicted in effigy with his terrible spear. You wonder what he would think about it, his woods being full of dredge now. A young girl from the cavern approaches you. I made this for you, she says, handing a crude necklace carved from a branch she must have found nearby. Thank you for saving my mama, she says before running back to her tent. Back at your tent, you rose Alette, who clings to your arm until she's completely awake. Bad dreams. Eventually the camp is broken down and it's time to move on to Frostvale. It feels like an end more than a start. We're gonna starve. <laughs> we only have six days worth of supplies, so should have brought more more. The caravan holds when a group of men appear on the trail, weapons at their feet. We've seen the dredge in your wake, says one. We don't wish to meet them alone. If you let us join you, we'll show you a watering hole with enough animals to fill those supply wagons. An inherent fear of strangers wages is mother from the caravan. What are you doing out here alone? We were hunting here for food when the trench found our village, says the man. When we returned, he looks away, unable to village. Okay. If you'll be no trouble, come along, you say. The men cautiously join your ranks and prove trustworthy. 
The hidden watering hole nearby is steaming with animals and soon your supplies are nicely restocked. Yay! Okay, well now we have 10 days. During our rest, one of the men get too drunk and end up splashing meat in warrior's face. A brawl erupts. Many thrown fists and a broken bone later, the instigator, Ramfrost, is tossed on the ground at your feet. Angry clansman looking for satisfaction. His personal defense is little more than drooling mumbles. Hmm. Guess who? We'll wait. Tie him up until he dries out. You grab a rope from the supplies and make short work of the sod. A few onlookers throw scraps at him, but most just walk away with a laugh. At least content that some measure has been taken. Well, I didn't want him to be mocked too much. The caravan is visibly relieved to find a small village on the way to Frostvale with beds and fresh supplies. The locals here are shocked by the news you bring and discuss it amongst themselves while you set up nearby. So we can rest, we can leave. Let's see, map? Right, we can look at the map. Well, actually, I'm curious where, how, how far we've gone. I know we just, like, yeah, we just left Skork, but we're already almost halfway there to the Frost Vale. Okay, it's, it's good to know that it's not too far. And by the way, Ivor can be <laughs> promoted again. Yeah, for 10. Uh, what's that? I don't know. Ah, why would you tell me what that means? I Okay, and I'll give you more health, and we can give you, we, we can? Okay, we can give you two strength, and this is, oh, it's for second level. Yeah, they need to kill. Okay, he killed someone. So we need to leave kills for others, so they get together. Whoa, this dark stony bell makes such a deep sound you can barely hear it at all. Arm rest. Armor per rest, okay, plus to aggro, plus from strength. Protects from death. Will per kill. Mm, actually, can we buy some food? One gets, okay. Let's go down to 30. Okay, alright. Oh, Fine. Have 16 day supplies. Oh, someone's hurt. But I think she can make it. Yep. They were right. Okay. You've, you're only just outside the village when two men in red approach. My name is Hogan, says one, gesturing to the other. My brother is Mogan. Many from the village wish to join you to Frost Bell. A third man, excluding rage, charges up the group. Shut your mouth, Hogan! He screams. Ooh. Yeah, and I should have pressed it because of the morale. What's going on? These bastards don't speak for us. They've been trying to divide the village since you got here. True. You can keep whoever wants to stay and die. The rest of us will go with the reasonable people of Skorg. I'll have you both gathered before I let half the village desert. Behind the angry villager, a mob of armed thugs have appeared, all furrowed brows and nervous stares. You both know what will happen to the rest of us if the fields are abandoned. Nobody leaves. There won't be anything to them once the dredge arrive. Dredge my ass. I don't know what that scam is this time, Hogan, but you got two choices. Get back to work, or I'm finally putting you in the ground. Mogul, what do you say? For it was unfair that he only asked me. Mogul draws, draws his axe slowly, followed by Hogan. Despite their confidence, the potters are significantly outnumbered. I think I make a poor farmer. Hmm. 
Ivor, let's make this a fair fight. Ivor steps forward, the fags hesitate. As you pull your axe, you notice that Alet is nowhere to be seen. Well, if they want to leave, let them. Why not? Why keep them tied to the village that will, sh will get overwhelmed? Just for the sake of it. How far can you move? We, I can't tell. Okay. No, I think. Ah, of course. Wait, if we move one step here, we can shoot him. And he needs to kill one person. Oh, oh, they go far. Ooh, and they hit hard. Okay, you move away as much as you can. Okay, you only hit for one. Ah. Let's try it. Nope. Let's try making this bloody flail. Okay, so this was the attack. Oh, well, they are kind of equal right now. And he can kill him. Okay, you get rid of him because it's his turn right now, or not. I guess someone else takes his place each time. Okay, next attack of hers will kill him. I won't give him another kill. He had too many already. Okay, that's that moves actually fine. I want her. Okay, I forgot. He's still alive. Oh. Battering ram. Okay. Sorry. Oh, god damn it. Actually, that worked. Move over here and shoot him. Yeah, he'll fall, but. Okay, and she will kill him, so she get promoted as well. You wait, and you. Nice. So we now have two archers ready to be promoted. Okay, it's... Yep. We're getting it together, slowly, but surely, yeah. He's injured now. <laughs> it's sad that they allow some people that could have worked on the field. To, to, the brothers thank you with white greens. Soon many of the villagers have joined your caravan. You scan around anxiously for a lad who had gone missing when the fighting began. Eventually you find her watching from afar. Hogun returns at the moment, introducing you to his son and wife, and you soon set out again. Um. Okay. Okay, you brought some supplies. That's nice. Morale well improved. Alit marches quietly alongside the caravan, a little distance since leaving the village. When you stop for a rest, 
or the leaf approaches your bowl. Alette, I have something for you. Old Leaf has gathered up the long banner from the caravan and smiles warmly as she passes it, passes it to Alette. What's that about? I was hoping you'd sew, sew up the banner with everything that has happened since we left Skolgor. Come find me another time, Rook, and we'll talk. Before you can comment, she departs. Dad, I, are you the chieftain now? I don't know. Oh, then that means... You're both quiet for a moment while Alette unfurls her the banner. Otleaf has been teaching me how to sew. She speaks pretty highly of you. Can we read the part about Mom? You know, on the banner has been soon the, his, the story of the families who have lived in Skogr throughout the years. Just as as is done on every banner in every town. I wish she was here, but I'm kind of glad she isn't. The section of banner about your family is short, but Alet has been sewing in colorful designs. Why do you say that? So she doesn't have to deal with all of this? Dredge, leaving home, and... Why did you have to kill those men in the village? I mean, if it's okay to ask... Um, they would have killed others. But how do you know which wounds are bad? Because the trash are terrifying. Every time you have to fight them, I just want to run, but I don't want to kill a person. Please. Are you mad at me? I'm glad you don't want to. Alet smiles at this, then her face sinks again. I guess I would do it. If I really had to. Do we have to? I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I, I know that. I think you're doing a great job. She hugs you. You spend the rest of your time together, sewing new verses into the banner. For better or worse, the story of Skog is your burden now. Okay, she wants to talk, but what I want to do is promote the two of them. Yep. And I want to get her some more health because she's really fragile. Is that pushing dodge? Yeah, she'll get it. And I think I'll give you this. It's a shame that I can't I cannot check what those are. They just make some noises. Wait, unless... Okay! Exertion is the amount of willpower you can use on any given action break is the amount of direct damage you can do naturally to do to an enemy's armor. Okay. <laughs> I think she will put her in here as well. You can always take her out. How are you doing, Odd? I'm alright. Oh. But I realized after I handed you the banner, I probably gave the wrong impression. My husband's still in and out of consciousness. It doesn't look good. It's harder than I thought it would be. Just not knowing. People tell me I'm a strong woman. It's funny, my father named me Oddleaf before I was even born. He wanted a boy so badly. Strong woman. What does that even mean? It means you're going to be okay. That's not being strong, that just... be. If I feel nothing about my husband dying, people think I'm strong. If I cry because my insides feel like they're on fire, I'm weak. Why does that feel so backwards? I'm sorry, Luke. It's been hard. You're not sure what to say. In the many years you've known the chieftain's wife, this is probably the most you've ever talked. You ask me to come find you? Yes, uh, it's about the banner. I thought you about it a long time. He asked me to give it to you, you know, if something happened. You... Why? Why me? He always depended on you, Rook. It should be mine. I could carry it, 
but I thought about why he named you. I get it, they won't follow a woman, families would leave, our banner would be divided. I will vouch for you. Come on, Rook, this isn't time for pretend. It's not just about our small town. What happens the first time we need something from another clan? How will that go? And the first time someone thinks they can take advantages of us, I think this is what has to happen. Maybe this is what it means to be a strong woman. She looks sideways, eventually giving over a timid smile. I'm not sure if that's the dumbest thing I've heard or the sweetest. Lisa, I know I tracked this out. The truth is, my husband and I could never have a child. I don't want our banner to end here. It will be safe with you and Alet. I know you're going to take care of her. She puts her hand on your shoulder as she heads back to the camp. Okay, and we will leave. There's nothing else to do. We really have lots of men with us. Well, maybe we should have rested to raise morale a little bit more. At a small split in the trail, a few fighters stop to speak with you, each carrying a single pack. We recognize this place, one miss says. Several spent several years here with some kin. If they're still around, we have to warn them of what's coming. With luck, we'll find you again in less than a week. <sighs> okay, I wish them well. You not you you're not your understanding. Kin is kin, you say. Do what you must to protect them. The man claps on your shoulder and the fighters depart. Not, 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 that wasn't a lot of them, so I think we'll be fine. Complaints of round thrusts, excessive drinking have resurfaced. This time the man stumbles over some tent ropes, pulled the snuggled canvas through a campfire, nearly setting a supply wagon on a flame. Craftsman put out the fire on both the wagon and around's first leg before leading him to you. This man drinks nothing but water from now on. Raph <laughs> Raphnus Fart groggily agrees, slowing his way through promises to quit being such a nuisance. Many of the onlookers snort or roll their, their eyes, but go back to their business. Somehow, you doubt it will be long before Hans first manages to find another drink, whether you allow it or not. Well, for the, if he screws up third time, he's getting kicked. Dredge! shouts a man from the back of the caravan. It's rough, rough and far, then unbashed and drunk, staggering towards you, looking not entirely sober. He screams again, pointing to trees in the distance. Fear races through the caravan as fighters pull their weapons. Scouts return with no sightings and fierce men run run fast. Hey, let's ready ourselves, just in case. There will be time for that later, you told the men. For now, we take no chances. A full day of uneasy rest passes with no sign of dredge. The caravan is annoyed by the scare and the delay. Eventually, Ranfrost bursts into laughter and ensures there were there never were any dredge, nor long after Ranfrost goes missing. Nobody searches for him or seems to mind. Well, it's normal more strong thriving city. The walls of Frostwetter now just keep the howling winds at bay. With luck, they'll hold out against Dredge as well. You jostle through fallow crowds of sunken faces who appear as though they've been freezing in front of the frost fell for days. The gates are closed, you come to a stop at the bottom of the hill. This is not looking good. Why are there so many people in the fields? Oh, sorry. We can't stay outside in the open like this. Oddly finds you amongst the many refugees. Rook, I just talked to some of the women here. 
Nobody is being led into the city. Why? It's overrun with Pharaoh from Blost Bar, Greyhorn, people from Bitra, the, all the nearby villages, the dredge are everywhere. And the chieftain of Rosedale has locked himself in, the, in his great hall, that's when they close the gates. When the dredge come, these hills will turn red. We have to get in there. Mm. We're getting in that in the walls somehow. I can get the I can get that gate open. Let's see if there's any other way before we start breaking down gates. I wasn't going to break it. Just push real hard. Okay, but first of all, let's rest. You spend a whole day at the rest houses. Everyone gives you the same story. J the chiefman just shut himself in the great hall and closed the gate. There are a lot of wounded people here, adds Alet. We could help them. The rest house is overflowing with refugees, the sick and wounded and noise. Uh, uh, let's tend to wounded. Alet and Old Leaf spend the day along with others in your caravan treating wounds, most of which came from the archers at the gates. I overheard from one woman that the city has been sending carts with food around, Old Leaf tells you. Could be a way in, Ivor replies. Next time they send a cart, we bring it back in, Old Leaf protests. Aside from leading to a fight, it would probably mean no more food from the refugees. Let's leave it alone. I don't want to get involved if others are going to suffer for it, say. So, return to what you are doing. The rest house is overflowing with refugees, the sick and wounded and noise. Um, let's try some things. You put the clay more of the rest house behind you. I still think we should be getting in, but be getting in that city, says Ivor, spying the gates on the hill. I know, I'm just trying to get something done. Hmm, look back on this. Well, 10%. Uh, it's 10% dodge. Seems very good. Okay, let's check out the gate. You approach the gate where hundreds of people have gathered in the trodden, bloody space in front of the doors. Several pin cushion bodies lie unclaimed, as though they simply belong there. Archers up on the walls make it clear that nobody will be getting in. Men and women below intermittently call for mercy and reason when they are not flinging songs and curses. Find out more about the crowd. You spent an hour talking to different people who all have the same story. A couple days ago, the chieftain shuts himself in, closed the gates and refused any more refugees. They've got huge stores of supplies in there too, adds one, of, adds one man. They're just hoarding them. Hmm. Let's shout. We're from Skogger! Open the gates! You shout out to the archers, not expecting much. You get as much response as you expected. Uh, did you really expect to push these gates open? I'm willing to try, grants Ivor, despite sizing up doors that look like they could hold back an army. And when men start shooting arrows and pouring out to stop you, then you kill them. He says, you're not sure this is the most soft line. We're not doing this. This is a terrible idea, you say. We don't even know how many are in there. Ivor folds his arms. He seems almost relieved that he didn't have to live up to his earlier boast. You leave the crowds and head back down the hill. There are a lot of people gathered around the rest houses, says Old Leaf Point. Maybe we can find help there, or at least make, s make ourselves useful. Yeah. There was nothing in the market. I suppose there's nothing over here. Is so Angel Pie? Oh, I don't. I think we didn't rest that at all. Mm, settle in from the long haul. After a long day of argument, you all finally agree to digging in with the other villages if you have to. Are you sure there's no other option? Ask Ivor. Sooner or later, the dread will come. Probably sooner. Let's make sure we haven't missed it. You know my thoughts already. Yeah, and right now I'm really eh, sad that I didn't 
go in with that card. No, there's nothing you can get over here. There's nothing over there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Rest, rest. You take the opportunity to rest. The caravan aids, talks with others and feels a little better in general. Everyone but Ivor, who is anxious about being out in the open. Late in the day, you notice a crowd forming around a man shouting about something. The commotion is turning into an angry mob who are becoming ever more furious about being kept out of the city. We overhear them talking about attacking the archers on the walls and breaking through the gate. Hogun and Mogun join in and fan the rising flames. I won't let my family die in a field like dogs, shouts Hogun. He turns to you. Do this thing, Rook. We need you again. Uh, okay, I'll join them. Ivar agrees, and you think you have a chance of pulling this off. As you approach the gates, Ivar stops you. He steps up to the gates alone. Archers above watch, more curious than anything else. Planting his feet, he pulls his full weight into the massive door. I saw it from Long Wooden Creek, nothing is happening. Then, unbelievably, the door starts trembling. The archers shout more to those inside the walls and out. The creaking becomes louder, the door cracked, then the doors part slightly. Help him! You shout to the others. When you look back again, you see that the entire mob have thrown in to push. The gate finally succumbs under your combined effort and you find yourself face to face with dumb founded guards. You bark at the mob to attack. Okay, and they have two archers, so we need to get close in fast. Which means... Yeah, pretty much. Setting pretty much like this. Just going first. She has 6 HP, so... Oh no, ah, uh, that's here as well! All he can do is move. Okay. Yeah. Figured. What? I will try my best so that I doesn't have to kill anyone. As long as they, the, the one we are fighting, are people, I don't want her to kill anyone. Everyone else is a whole different story. What the hell? Okay. But she will be helping. Okay, no deflection this time. Uh, maybe like this. Yeah, I probably want to do this, but hey, you're not killing anyone. Oh, oof. okay, hit him. That's bad. Oh, he has battering ram. That's not what I wanted to see. Okay, so Aled is not shooting anyone. you get his armor you're gonna help your brother and your brother is gonna get hurt <sighs> you do nothing well we I think we can... Give her under kill. I lost count who killed how many. So there's that. Guards who aren't lying at your feet run. A crowd of men and women scurry into the city while they have the chance, but it's only moments before a man wearing all black approaches with many more axemen on his back. 
What in the depths are you doing? Letting ourselves in. I see that. I'm very impressed. But all those people we just let in here, dead. All those women and children with you, dead. And thanks for killing the only ones holding this place together, Ska. What are you talking about? The man orders his guards to get the doors closed again before more refugees notice. If I knew there were fighters and a varl outside, I would have brought you in. I'm Ekil. I'm in charge here. You heard about the chieftain? So we heard he's hiding out in the great hall. Oh really? Think you mean hiding out in a grave? He's eating worms, if that wasn't clear. What happened in here? Soon as they heard dredge were coming, anyone who couldn't swing an axe got one to the head. That's the short story, anyway. At least three clans in here were in the overtrap and food, and the worst are the godforsaken Navarro. He eyes Ivor and shrugs with exaggeration of, as if simply start stating the obvious. We're in more danger here than out there. Look, I was in charge here before things went to crap. You've got some people who can fight. You've got a Varl who apparently has the strength of a god. I can keep your flag safe in the Great Hall. You fight for me. And to take back Frostvale. I don't take sides. Too hard to tell when the good guys have become the bad. Fine. Cut this ship loose and watch your own asses. What do I care? All I want to do right now is get out of them streets. Think carefully about what you want. Uh, we'll join you for now. Good, because whatever else you were thinking of would have been a bad idea. Akil shouts to his men and with the gates closed you follow him down obscured alleys. Hope you know what we're doing. Making it up as we go, either. Little did I sleep. How come we're back? I was able to get about as many warriors from Strand as you wanted, and more weapons, extra supplies too. You pick up, just now realizing Monger has been talking to you. Since Vogner died, everyone has been looking to you to make the decisions. It's exhausting. Hakan? I heard you. I was saying the Varl we sent to Strand have returned. The governor gave us most of what we wanted. Good enough. Much resistance from the governor, some... I don't think he was happy about us buying his fighters using his own money. He also insisted we take on a lackey of his to watch over his property, a man named Eric. Eric? I met him. He seemed competent enough. Regardless, the governor will have to get over it unless he wants stretch crawling through his streets. We've put down every slag that has wandered through here while you were gone. Enough flapping of mouths then. You assured that wound has healed, wouldn't? I agree. Enough has already gone wrong. If something happens to the prince on a mission of peace, the alliance would rot or worse. And Ludin makes his own decision. We will only be made to do this again later, and I will not suffer at it all a second time. Either take us through the wandering world, or do your job and slaughter some dredge. Lodin turns abruptly with a scroll, he stamps back to his ring of tents and followers. Wandering, ro wandering world is not an option of this many. I could crush that boy's skull with one hand. If Lodin wouldn't be deterred, you'll have to deal with it. Don't let Ludin get to you. Let's go. I'm sick of looking at this dump. What do I tell the warriors, Hagen? Mm. Tell them to be cautious. We'll do. If they work and we'll set off. Okay, but that's gonna be it for today.
Thank you very much, stay alive and see you soon, bye!